Okay, we're gonna try something a little bit different because uh, I'm sitting in this really, let me stand up. <clears throat> Ow, it hurts to stand up. I am standing, I don't know about now, but yeah. I am sitting in this really nice swing here. It's at the campground we're staying at, at the moment. So I'm gonna try to sit in this swing, hold the camera with one hand, <laughs> try to hold my phone with the other and go through this devotion. Now, our topic this morning from today.reframing.com is a stairway to heaven. And we're going to be reading Genesis 28 verses 10 through 22 from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And let's go. So Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. And he came to a certain place and stayed there that night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed, and behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. Your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And in you and in your offspring shall the families of the earth be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is, is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So early in the morning Jacob took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on it. He called the name of that place Bethel, and the name of the city was Luz at first. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and I will give him bread to eat and clothing to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God, and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house, and all of and all that you give to me I will give a full tenth to you. So when Jacob arrives at Bethel, he is broken. He's a broken young man. Supposedly, he has inherited the covenant blessing from his father that promises that God will be with him, give him a great name, and make him a blessing to all nations. But as he goes to sleep that night, he is alone and discredited, hardly a candidate to bless anyone, much less all the peoples of the earth. But that night, in his dreams, Jacob catches a surprising glimpse of the God who has far more in store for him than he has ever understood. The text points out that this occurred in a certain place, so that was not some imaginary or dreamed up location. And here, in this ordinary place on this earth, Jacob sees a stairway reaching from the earth to heaven, an open passageway to God, and God assures Jacob that all of his covenant promises shall be fulfilled. Has God ever met you in an ordinary place, an unexpected place? Sometimes we, like Jacob, imagine that we need to work harder, feel more holy, or storm heaven to seize God's promises. And like Jacob, we find that our efforts leave us broken and alone. But God reminds us that we don't need to build a stairway to get to heaven. In Jesus, he has constructed a way for broken people to return to him. Check out John 1:51 too for that one. Will you let God surprise you with his grace today? Let's pray. God of heaven, what a great promise you give us. Help us today to see your grace to sinners, including us. Bring us to Jesus who alone opens the gates of heaven to us. Amen. A stairway to heaven. I like how that devotion kind of ended by asking, are you storming, trying to storm the gates? 
Are you trying to build that stairway? Because we do, don't we? We try to build that stairway. We try to build, you know, try to storm those gates and seize the blessing of Jesus. And that's just not how it works, friends. We cannot build a path to heaven. You know why? Because one has already been built. The perfect one, Jesus Christ, built that path to heaven. All we have to do is get on that path and walk it. We will receive God's blessings. We will receive everything that God intends for us if we just get on the path that Jesus created. We don't create our own. We don't push it on our own. We just go on that path. Again, as I say a lot, it's just that simple. Accept Jesus Christ into your heart. Get on the path He wants you to be on. Stay on that path. And the blessings will be there. The blessings could be two feet in front of you. The blessings could be two miles in front of you. Two days in front of you. Two years in front of you. Twenty years in front of you. You don't know where the blessings are. You don't even know what the blessings are. But we all get the one blessing right off the bat that we know and the only one that really matters. And that's the blessing of the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ into our heart. Once we get that blessing, everything else is gravy. And I love gravy, but you can't rush gravy. You can't rush a good meal. You can't rush God's blessings. So patience, prayer, and promises. You be patient. You pray. And God will fulfill His promises to you today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I love spending time with you guys every day. Please share this out with some friends that you think need to hear this. Even if they aren't Christian friends. And maybe you're looking for a way to, you know, bring your friend to a relationship with Christ. And you're either worried or not sure how to do it on your own. Well, sharing these devotions might be a way. Might be a way to open that door. So, you share these out with your friends. Just share them out on Facebook or other social media as well. You never know who needs to hear what I just said. It could be you. It could be me. I could just be saying this for my benefit today. And you know what? That's okay. We don't know what God's plan is for the words that, that you know I speak and what I'm doing. But I know that it's God's plan. And that's really all that matters. So thank you guys for helping spread the word of Jesus Christ. If you have any prayer requests or praise reports or just need somebody to talk to, you can either put notes in our comments on Facebook or YouTube. Or you can uh, shoot us an email, give us a phone call. That information is in the link of is in the description of every one of our devotions at the bottom. So thank you guys so much for watching. We love you, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.